All right. Well, hi, everybody. I, I'm Ursula Crawford, and I'm the Family Resource and Engagement Coordinator for Early Childhood Cares. And my guest today is Brittany DeLiso. She is a behavioral health strategist with Pacific Source. And is that specifically the Oregon Health Plan part of Pacific Source? Yeah, with their Medicaid program. Medicaid, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So, yeah, we just, I wanted to have Brittany on because she's um, a mental health professional, and I feel like self care is a big topic um, that we all kind of could use some support with right now as parents during this super challenging season that we're in. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe Brittany, you could just start with talking about why self care is important for parents. Yeah, um, I really I think self care is kind of a trendy word that has had some momentum lately, which is great to have more emphasis on that. But I really see it as just kind of meeting your basic needs, um, which is important for all humans, right? Um, and I think with parents, the additional requirement for that why it's really necessary is twofold. One, because um, we are modeling, you know, with our actions every minute that our kids are watching, even when we don't realize that they're watching or listening, um, that they're taking note of how to like be a good, healthy human. Um, so to be able to monitor or to model time apart and um, tending to personal needs is going to teach them and equip them to do that for their future. Um, and then also it's like a really overutilized um, example of putting your gas mask on first, not gas mask, oxygen mask. Yeah. Don't put yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, your oxygen mask on first, but, um, I think it's so true that if you're, if your basic needs are depleted, um, eventually your tank runs out and you can't offer, you know, meeting the basic needs of your kiddos. And so even just for their very, um, you know, ability to thrive, we need to ensure that our tank is filled enough to be able to offer that too. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so I should say also Brittany and I are both parents of young children, so we, um, we offer experience, <laughs> um, but I've been thinking about that too, like I've been teaching positive parenting classes for early childhood cares for um, over a year now, and I just realized like I can't implement these strategies if I'm not first doing self-care. Like if I'm not able to regulate my own emotions because I'm so exhausted, then there's no way that I can really successfully support my kids. Um, so it's really, yeah, it's important. It's kind of the first step, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think that as parents, we assume that putting your child's every need first is like the best thing that you can do as a parent. And it kind of comes you know, from this, the phase when they're infants and they literally depend on you for every breath, you know, then you're trained of like, okay, this is my role, but then kind of reorienting yourself as they gain a little more independence to learn. It's just as important to care for our own needs and model that for them too. Yeah. Um, so, okay, we've established that it's important. So how can parents, what are some strategies that parents can use for self-care particularly during this time when um, like a lot of resources have kind of disappeared. Right. Yeah. Um, I think my thought in general around self-care for parents is that we have to be a little bit more creative um, and even more so, of course, while we're um, honoring the stay at home order. So um, I, I think it's helpful to consider it in the different realms of our need. So like thinking about caring for your body, your mind, your heart, and your spirit, um, and understanding that we're holistic beings. And if one of those is depleted, it can really kind of throw the rest of them out of whack. Um, so that can also give you a little bit um, more of like a targeted approach of like caring for my needs, especially if they've been neglected for a while, if we've got um, parents of young kiddos is so overwhelming, like where to even start, just to breaking it down a little bit. So in caring for your body, that can be as simple as, um, honestly, one of my most consistent forms of self-care is taking a shower. And my kids let me do that by myself, which I know is not always the case. Um, and I have a partner that allows for that too, or I do it after they go to bed. Um, but I take uh, long showers because <laughs> I am fully alone in there. And it's just, yeah, meeting a basic need. Um, but also, of course, 
it's exercise and, and going on walks has been such a huge thing in Oregon, at least mm -hmm. I think during this quarantine has been really accessible for a lot of folks. Um, and then making sure that you're nourishing your body with food um, that tastes good and is, and is, um, promotes your health. Those things can all be considered self-care. It doesn't have to be like a luxurious bubble bath or something. Mm -hmm. um, and then looking at caring for your mind, which could be um, reading, which I would count as a luxury as a parent, um, at least in our home, but also listening to books on tape, something that's like intellectually stimulating or meaningful conversation with folks that can happen. Um, you know, my husband and I have been connecting with friends from afar via Zoom, just like this. So during COVID that could still happen or um, the trusty old phone call. Um, and then also considering your caring for your heart, um, which right now more than ever, I see that really as a proactive intention to try to connect with other people um, and especially trying to connect with other parents um, mm -hmm. like Ursula and I are able to do with like parents that are in a similar season um, because kids needs, you know, are so unique with each of their developmental phases. And um, you're kind of fully in that moment when you're trying to care for the kiddo at whatever phase they're at. And so to find other folks that, that get that, um, I've been laughing to myself because I've been thinking like we are in the stage right now where I walk into the bathroom and it's always mysteriously really wet. <laughs> water, I think, but I'm like, what is this? Because my kids are learning how to wash their hands themselves, which is awesome. But like, so finding other parents to connect with on like that deep felt heart level beyond just talking about um, the weather. I think is, is really important in King's self care. Um, and then lastly, looking at kind of a spiritual connection of whatever faith practice that you have. Um, I think every human being is spiritual. And so tuning into that and whether that's prayer or meditation or mindfulness, um, and, and in light of that too, considering that like three minutes of that is better than zero minutes of that. So I know that some of those spiritual practices are often equated with stillness, which is hard for parents to come by often, um, but even taking a minute before or after your kids, you know, wake up or go to bed um, to engage spiritually too could be a kind of a practical way to do that. Yeah, great. I love that the first thing you said was showering because I always feel like this is like my spa time. Like I get to take a shower and it's so relaxing. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's yeah, he's learned to like not nothing comes, nothing is important when I'm taking a shower. That's like number one. Great. Yeah, that's good. Um, okay. So we covered that. And then what about like going beyond that for parents, maybe who need extra support or maybe, um, feel like they need professional counseling. Mm -hmm. Um, well, maybe first of all, like what are some things that like might make you feel like you would benefit from getting professional counseling? kind of some like red flags is a strong word, but kind of <laughs> indicators that like, yeah. Um, yeah, man. And I think right now, whether folks are able to name it or not, I think everyone is experiencing grief right now because there has been loss of some sense of normalcy, um, you know, on a spectrum of being really extreme. But um, so I think um, some common indicators, you know, some of the more prevalent um, kind of mental health conditions, if you will, um, are, are anxiety and depression. And that shows up a lot and often isn't always named, but looking at kind of your own um, typical patterns and seeing if those seem different. So if like um, your thoughts feel like they're stuck, you know, the term of ruminating, like if your thoughts feel kind of stuck in um, places where they don't normally go, whether that's feelings of extreme fear um, or sadness. And if that starts to impact some of your other rhythms, like your sleep schedule or your appetite, um, those are generally places where that can start um, and, and maybe easier places to kind of catch that um, before it, it spirals to feeling really overwhelming or out of your control. And honestly, if um, if you start to notice those things, or even if you have a question of like, is this, does this seem kind of abnormal? Cause the world is just weird right now. So <laughs> kind of hard to gauge, even just calling and connecting with a mental health professional to kind of tease that out. 
could be, you know, only two therapy sessions and you're like, okay, actually, I think I'm doing okay. I just needed a third perspective. Um, or it could open the door to finding out that there's a little bit more going on. Um, and in regard to, to resources in the community, um, the Lane County community is really quite rich with mental health resources. Um, certainly there can be wait lists and right now most of it is limited to telehealth, mm -hmm. um, which I've been speaking to a lot of mental health providers over the last two months and they have found that telehealth is really effective. Um, and there's, there's some myths or fears about it because it's different and feels weird. Um, but I actually engage in telehealth with my therapist. Um, and it's not as good, I will say, as <laughs> seeing her in person, just like I would rather do anything in person right now. Um, but it, it, it can be really effective. So just to um, squash any myths or, I, or misperceptions that it's not. Um, and there's a ton of, of agencies in town and private practice folks that are taking new clients even during this time and conducting those initial intakes to kind of help you piece out your story and what's going on um, done over telehealth and then as things open up so okay and for people who have um, Oregon health plan is there kind of a good place to start to find a provider yeah, honestly, so in Lane County, if you call either Trillium or Pacific Source, depending on who you have your Oregon Health Plan through, um, both agencies or both insurance companies have um, care management supports is what they're called, but it's basically folks um, who who have an awareness of kind of the current availability of mental health providers that take OHP. So they can tell you who's signed up with OHP as far as the counselors or therapists, and then also often can point you to who has openings sooner rather than later. Um, so the best place to start is um, you can go to either of their websites or you can um, find a pho the phone number on their website to call and talk to a, a real human um, and kind of explain maybe what you're experiencing or what you're looking for and share preferences on like if you had a gender preference on who you'd like to see or someone who specializes in something if you if you know enough to of what you need to even ask that. Um, or you could just say, hey, I think I need help. Um, and that's what they are totally there for so that if you call it's um it's an eight to five monday through friday deal um but you can also go look at their directories on their website great thanks um all right well do you have any other resources or strategies you wanted to talk about that we didn't already cover you know one that just came to mind in thinking of um folks who have access to internet, which I know some folks have less access with COVID stuff. Some of the public spaces are closed down, but if you do, um, there's a lot of apps that can help promote like emotional well-being and self-care and even kind of keep you accountable if you're wanting to try to implement that a little bit. I'm just pulling up my cell phone and looking at my page. Um, so just to share a couple, um, and I don't know if you can put this out in writing too or not, Ursula, but um, there is one called the Calm app, and it has, mm -hmm. has some pay, paid options, but also some free options around practicing some mindfulness practices. Um, and then also there is um, one called My3. So there's a few resources out there um, for folks that really are experiencing some depression or thoughts of suicidality, which definitely can spike during times of extreme stress like we are in right now and is important to acknowledge and talk about. So there's a couple of um, apps that provide some supports around that. So my three just kind of gives you a structure of how to target three people um, quickly who can provide some safety and support, whether you're experiencing suicidal thoughts or just really struggling. Um, and then the last one is called Headspace, which um, has a, a slew of different mental health, emotional health resources too. But um, yeah, sometimes those resources when they're in your pocket feel a little bit more doable than um, trying to practice something more of reaching out. Mm -hmm. um, and the last thought that I had, two other points too that might circle back to some of the practical things to try to implement um, that are more in general terms. One is the practice of gratitude. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like you and I have even talked about this, Ursula, but um, the, you know, there's scientific proof that practicing gratitude can really change how your brain operates. Um, so some simple practices of looking for what you're thankful for, which in times like these is no small task for sure. Um, so it can be even just one thing 
per day, but trying to develop a rhythm of that. Um, and then I also was thinking about, at least in our home, I'm fortunate enough to have kiddos and a spouse that really um, make me feel special on Mother's Day and my birthday. And I was thinking, if it's possible to do that, then, you know, how can I find other pockets of time throughout, you know, normal life to feel special or allow myself to be um, the center of attention for a minute? Um, similarly to like a celebration like that. Um, and that feels a little bit like backwards from maybe what we're supposed to do and prioritizing others and, and our kids and stuff. But again, um, maybe like step three or four of trying to implement self-care is allowing yourself to be celebrated and spoiled in like a really designated time um, could be like a goal that we, I, a goal that I would work towards, I guess. Because mm -hmm. uh, I think that that could have a meaningful impact too. So yes, nothing wrong with um, spoiling yourself or allowing yourself to be spoiled in addition to just meeting your basic needs too, like a shower. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I've been, um, one thing that just is coming to mind, I've been reading this book called Permission to Feel. I think it's Dr. Mark Brackett, and he's a child psychology professor at Yale. Um, but anyway, it's all about emotional regulation, and he talks a lot about how, like, one of the, like, really important parts of that is just being able to label our own emotions. Um, if we can like talk about our emotions and label them that in itself is an emotional regulation strategy So I thought that was really cool And then um, it's also something that like you can work on with your kids So if you're talking more about labeling your own emotions, then it kind of can trickle down to them learning that and then help everyone um, So that's been good and that book actually had a lot of like really specific strategies um, If you guys have time to read psychology books right now <laughs> I'm sure we all have time for that but it was, it's a pretty like it's, it's pretty engaging and the other thing that's coming to my mind too I think for parents of young kiddos is um, like children's behavior can be a really big challenge um, for our own like emotional regulation and wellness like when we're dealing with behavior challenges with our kids so just want to offer some supports for families around that um, parenting now has is, is still doing um, stuff. They've got six different ways that they're supporting families remotely. So you can connect with them. And I, I believe I posted that to the Early Childhood Cares Facebook page earlier today. So it's on there. Um, another one is Well Mama. If you have, if you're pregnant or in the first year postpartum, they have um, virtual support groups right now for parents who may be experiencing some mood disorders around that time. And I'm gonna be talking with them next week on here. And then Triple P Online is a positive parenting class that's available online. Um, you can find it on lanekids.org and it's free for Oregon Health Plan members. Even if it just your child has Oregon Health Plan, you can get it for free. Um, and then the other one is that we have our positive parenting group um, through early childhood cares and the next session of that will be in July. So if you are a family in our program, you can take that class for free as well and that'll be online. So that is, those are my tips and resources. Thank you, Brittany, for joining us. I always love hearing from you. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. Okay. Take care. Yeah.